Crazy Will here today, and today we're gonna to be talking about Apple's HomeKit. That's right, I'm gonna show you how to set it up on your iPad and your iPhone, so stay tuned and we'll get it started. Hey, welcome to another episode of Crazy Will's Tech Show. Today I wanted to talk to you guys about HomeKit. A lot of people don't really know what it is and I just wanted to put the information out there and if you do, this video is not for you, but if you don't or you think you know a little bit about it, I'm gonna teach you what it is today and how to set it up. And by the way, it is free. It comes, if, you, if you're an Apple iPhone user, it comes free or you have an iPad, it's a free app. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about it. So first things first, what is HomeKit? I mean, you might have never even heard of this thing. What is HomeKit? Well, HomeKit is an app that Apple produced to make it easier for the smart home. Easy to access and easy for you to use right from your smartphone or tablet. So it's an easy setup. The only thing that is required required for HomeKit to work when you buy your smart devices is that it has this little logo right here. And if you don't have that on the box, not really gonna help you at all. It's not a HomeKit enabled device. So what you're looking for, like these are iHome plugs, this is what you're looking for, HomeKit. So keep that in mind if you want to make this work. Now there are other ways around this and uh, hopefully I'll be making videos on that soon. Okay, so how do you get HomeKit? You know, it's a free app. Same place you get all the apps, guys. Right here, we're gonna go to the App Store and you're gonna go into Search and you're gonna type in HomeKit. It is this one right here, HomeKit. So don't be confused by the other ones that are like $14.99, but this is HomeKit and this is what you wanna look for. Okay, so once you install it on your phone or your iPad, I'm showing you my iPad for example, it's gonna look like this. This is basically what the app's gonna look so like. What works with HomeKit? Well, real simple. Any product that has a HomeKit label on it, they have garage door openers, smart plugs, light bulbs, all kinds of stuff. You just look for that smart HomeKit logo right in the corner, like I showed you earlier, and it'll work with HomeKit. It automatically pairs with HomeKit. Okay, so we're gonna take a tour of the HomeKit app, and instead of doing it like how I normally do it, as I'm gonna do it on this app, and I'm gonna post it right here so that way you guys could see it and follow along with me. So we're gonna open the app, and it lands on the home screen okay so we have the home screen which where all your favorites are going to be stored and not only are your favorites going to be stored there but you're also going to see the name of it and in, in this case it's called Will and Chris's home and it tells me how many accessories are working how many outlets it's you know gives you a little list of what's going on there so if we go to rooms you can actually go into rooms so I'm in the bedroom right now and then we go into the deck the garage the living room, the office. You can also add pictures, which is really cool. You can add pictures to the actual background. So you can actually have live photos, which I'm probably gonna be doing this on my iPhone, so you'll actually see that. Now, the next button at the bottom, so we had home, rooms, and now we have automation. And this is where you could set different automations. I'm not gonna really get into this, but I do wanna show you it. So like when people arrive, people leave. So you can actually set commands with their iPhones when people leave, when people arrive. You could set occurs at a time of day, you can add accessory controllers, you can add sensors, you can do all kinds of stuff that will make different commands. I play with this a little bit, not too much. So we're gonna hit cancel on that. So what I wanna do now is I wanna show you how you would add an accessory. And it's really, really, really simple. And this is one of the reasons I like HomeKit. The first thing you have to do is set up your accessory. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna get your accessory, you're gonna set it up, you're gonna make a username and password, get it working on your network. So the iHome plugs, you download the iHome app. I'm just using them as an example. You download the iHome app, you set up the plugs, you get everything working, you get it on your network. Then you go into HomeKit, you can hit the plus button and hit add accessory. And what it's gonna do is it goes to your camera and you could scan the barcode. There's a barcode. I'm gonna show you a little bit of a picture right here of what the barcodes look like. And when you get that barcode, you scan it with your device and it automatically connects and bam. And you can assign it to a room and I'm gonna show you that right now. So this is how we can assign it to a room. So let's say, let's go to rooms. Let's say I want, we're gonna do the office light box, which by the way, Real quick, I'm gonna show you how that works. Boom, boom, isn't that really neat? Anyway, so we got the office light box. Let's say I wanna move it someplace else. So if we hold down on it, which you got the switch again, I'll show you that, the on, off, you can go to details. 
And in details, it shows you what the name of it is. It shows you if the outlet's in use. It shows you which room, and that's where you could change it. So we're gonna change, uh, I don't know, maybe we'll put it in default for now. You know, which I'm not gonna keep it there. And then, what type is it? And you know, and you could pick outlet, fan. I just left it as outlet, which is the default. So, you could add it to groups with other things. It's really cool, and now, I know what you guys are probably wondering right at this moment. You're probably like, Will, you're, you're an Alexa guy. You always talk about Alexa. Yes, I do love Alexa, and I love its capabilities. You can say her name and get her to work. I love everything about her. But, it's nice to have a backup system, especially, and I'm gonna get into this, if you have a hub with HomeKit. The reason why is you can use this with Siri as well as HomeKit. Now, if, you have, if you're like me and you have an iPhone or an Apple Watch, you can, hey Siri, turn off light box. And you can control it anywhere, whether you're hanging out in the office or if you're out in the yard and you're not near an Alexa, this is a really cool feature. Another cool thing about Siri that's really cool that surprisingly Alexa doesn't have is, hey Siri, what's the status of my light box? Your light box is off. Hey Siri, turn on my light box. Done. Now, I'm not a huge fan of Siri, I will be honest with you. I was really excited about Siri when it first came out. I was super psyched. I thought it was going to be the next big thing, and it could have. It could have really been because it was out, and if I'm, if I'm correct, and I'm sure somebody's going to correct me on this, but I'm pretty sure it was out before the Echoes. So I was really excited about this. I felt that we were light years ahead of them. I felt like they were light years ahead of Google. I, I, I felt that they were really going to get the market because they came out with this, and it was, it was going to be the thing. Didn't happen that way. It is probably the least smart, smart home device you could possibly think of. It does have certain features that the Google and the Alexa doesn't have, like the ability to actually check if a device is on or off. I don't know if Google has that, but I know Alexa doesn't have that. And it, it's a little annoying because be, it'd be nice, you know, if you can't see the device to be able to ask the device. So I just thought that was a really cool feature. I'm gonna stop rambling. But like I always said, if you're gonna choose smart home, I say Alexa. If you want more of an assistant, I say Google. And Siri has never really been on my list, but it is really cool with the HomeKit devices. So just putting that out there. One thing that Siri needs, and this is probably why it's able to give feedback, is a hub. When I say that, usually in the past, it has been Apple TV is the hub for your HomeKit enabled devices. Basically what Siri needs to be able to connect to these smart devices that you purchase, it can't just use your network, it needs a hub. So your Apple TV would be your hub and that way you would have an access point from your phone, let's say you're at work and you're not on your network, that's the way it can actually get in, talk to your network and be able to control devices outside. Now if you do not have an Apple TV, and now you're able to do it with an iPad, but if you don't have an Apple TV or an iPad, you are not able to communicate outside your network. So that means if you're at the house, you'll be able to use HomeKit all you want. But if you're at work and you wanna be able to use HomeKit, you don't have that capability. So if you do have an iPad or Apple TV and it stays at home, you can use that as your hub. Real quick, and this is one of the reasons I like it, not only for the Hey Siri feature, but I like being able to I'm gonna show you this right on my phone. You swipe up and then there's Homebridge. You can actually add that into your control center and then you just click on it and your favorites are displayed right there. I mean, how great is that? I have my garage door opener, my kitchen lights, my deck lights, everything that I use on a regular basis when I'm not near my Alexa, I can just use this and just swipe up real quick and tap. And I actually use the buttons more than I actually say it. Like I said, if you have an Apple Watch, you could do the Hey Siri function and do it right from there. So I could be like, Hey Siri, Turn on the deck lights. Okay. You know, and it's that simple. And it, it did it through my phone because my phone's unlocked. But you could do it from your Apple Watch, which is really cool. Especially because your Apple Watch is usually always with you. I love my Alexa, so I'm not saying that you don't need the Alexa. I like having it in every room. But it's nice to have redundancies if you're an iPhone user. And that's what I use it. I use it as redundancies. So if she's down because she's a cloud-based system, I have this one, which it is another cloud-based system, but it's two different cloud-based systems and the chances of both of them being down at the same time are highly unlikely, but who knows? And plus, if you have the hub, it'll work through the hub and you won't be in the cloud. Well, you'll still be in the cloud with 
I gotta think about that. Probably still cloud. But anyway, you got the hub. It'd probably be a little bit easier, I'm thinking. Okay, so I really do like the home kit. I'm gonna give you my thoughts on this, guys. It's really cool. What I don't like about it is, and I went through this with my garage door opener, which is now finally HomeKit enabled. Uh, I have to say thank you to Chamberlain. They actually realized that I didn't have HomeKit and I was really upset about that. And they did send me a free hub. So I will give them a shout out and tell them they've been redeemed. So I put them back up to a five star. But anyway, I don't like the fact that you have to buy HomeKit enabled devices. I understand they have the codes. I understand they are getting a little less strict with it and I get it. They want it tested. They want it perfected. They want to make it nice and easy. And I respect that, but it is really frustrating that everything has to have a HomeKit. So you wind up buying more products that will be HomeKit enabled. You know, I'll be honest with you until I did a workaround, which I will probably be making a video on that I was not totally thrilled with HomeKit but it is cool for example for the last three weeks we have been battling with our iHome plugs I haven't been working their cloud has been down towards Alexa I don't know why but they keep sending me emails apologizing that the service went down we know this is unacceptable but my home kit worked with it even when they're down. So I believe they're using Bluetooth or they're using just my wireless network. I'm not positive on that. I'll be honest with you, I don't really know. I read some things that said something about Bluetooth, which I don't think is true, but I think it's just using my wireless network and it's actually being able to control through the hub and turn them on and off. But they worked, it worked on the app, which was nice. That's my other redundancy. You could always go to the app, but it's kind of frustrating going through apps. But anyway, that's the one thing about HomeKit that I didn't care for, that you have to buy HomeKit enabled products. Overall guys, it's free. It's on the iPhone. If you're an iPhone user, what does it take? Download it, set it up, and it's really easy to use, which I think is the key for smart home becoming mainstream. For me, Simple means the average user will use it. And that's why I wanted to show you this video. And that's why I made a video on it so that way people will see it. And like I said, I have a workaround coming so you can make devices that are not HomeKit enabled, HomeKit enabled. So we're gonna get to that. It's a little more technical. Make sure you like and subscribe and share if you enjoyed this video. I really appreciate all the kind words and the comments from you guys. You guys are awesome. And all the new subscribers really makes me feel like I'm doing something right. And remember, you can do anything you put your mind to. Later, guys. Oh, crazy Will here today. Today, we're going to be talking about... You thought I was a picture, didn't you? Trey, like, and subscribe. Do me a favor already.